But let's go ahead and move on to this first topic. And we're diving in the realm of DC. Talking about that Blue Beetle. You're like, Brandon, that was a couple of weeks ago when that hit the theaters, man. And it didn't do too good at the theaters. So what the heck do you want to talk about? And now it's probably going to be on streaming tomorrow. Better yet, tomorrow. It was probably on streaming yesterday because it stunk it up so bad. Well, guys, apparently they hit a milestone. What milestone could that be? Let's get into it. This is coming from comicbook.com. Blue Beetle hits global box office milestone. What is going on? What's going on? Blue Beetle has now crossed 100 million at the global box office. And guys, again, if you're watching this via live on the replay, there's a link to that in the description box below for you to read at your own leisure. Uh, but let's get into this to see the significance. Blue Beetle has just hit a major box office milestone after a few weeks at the box office. The latest DC film has finally crossed 100 million at the global box office. Over the weekend, the film's global box office climbed to 101.9 million through Sunday. Domestically, the film took a third spot behind Barbie, number two, and the Equalizer three in the top spot. Domestically, Blue Beetle's Hall is sitting at $57.9 million. That stinks something serious. At this point, while Blue Beetle is having somewhat lackluster performance at the box office, it's still tracking to beat out Shazam Fear of the Gods. The second Shazam film's worldwide total hit around $133.8 million, and Blue Beetle is projected to end its theatrical run with a global haul between $140 and $170 million. Uh, that's not good, guys. That's not good. You guys let me know what you think, because I want to know. Uh, what will happen with Blue Beetle? Well, will there be more? Well, Blue Beetle's box office may not be as high as perhaps some would have hoped. Of course not. Here, DC James Gunn confirmed that we will still see the titular characters, Joe Lowmore and Dwayne as Blue Beetle, along with a handful of other characters in the DC universe. And so uh, I'm, I'm around with comic book on this. I think they're going to be right on that. And James Gunn has said such. We're part of the universe. We're a part of the world. We are part of the plans that they have been creating for the future installments of the DCU. Blue Beetle director Angel Manuel Sota said in an interview earlier this summer, but we're not tied to all the films from the past. Yes, our movie lives in the world where superheroes exist, but that doesn't mean that a certain event or a certain alliance or certain things from the past dictate where our film is going. Guys, have you seen Blue Beetle? What did you think about it? Let me know. Did you check out my review? My review, let me know whether you agree or disagree. And how are you feeling about this, man? Um, it's not doing well at the box office, unfortunately. Box office mojo 101, 101, um, you know, 101 million, 800,000. That's not good. The bot, the budget for this was, I think, 109 million, 109 million dollars production budget. Yeah, oh, 104. So, you know, the rule of three over here, guys, you know, that's not, it was at 312 million, 104 times three. Yeah. For them to feel like they didn't just completely waste their time and waste their money. And they didn't get that. Not even close. It only got this much. And so, this is the one of the worst of the worst. We're going to see what happened with Iron Man, not Iron Man, with Aquaman 2. When that hit theaters, I don't know if is it still coming out in December? I know, right, Kevin? Ouch. It hurt, it stings the nostrils. What movie is that from? Yeah, damn. I know. I know. It's it's not it's not working out for Blue Beetle. But guys, this uh this article is in the description box below for you to read at your own leisure. So you guys let me know what y'all think about that. But hit a one in the chat. I know, hit hit on the one in the chat, Miss Harper. I know you I know you was watching it. Hit the one in the chat if you was watching My Adventures of Superman. Hit a one in the chat if you was watching My Adventures of Superman. I want to know. I'm curious. Because it was a good show. And this is bringing us to topic number two of the day. And this is coming from, where is this coming from? This is coming from the direct.com. We have an update on season two. The the episode, the last episode just came out this Thursday and Friday, but we already know what's going to happen for season two coming from the direct dot com. My Adventures with Superman season two gets release update from a producer. That is what's up right there. That's what's up right there. Who has seen the film? Not the film, but who has seen the show? Yes. OK. Lady Hotel has seen it. Miss Harper and Teflon Don. All right. 
You guys won the prize. You get a high five from your boy. <laughs> anyway, uh, y'all check out my review for this, but let me know what y'all thought. Uh, hey, let's see. What, what does this say right here? My Adult Swim and Max is on my adventures with Superman. Just got an exciting release update for season two run. It's upcoming run. Jack Quay's take on Man of Steel is approaching the end of an exciting first season, taking on thrilling DC Comics villains like Livewire and Parasite while starting his alter ego career at the Daily Planet. I really did enjoy the show. My Avengers of Superman gets season two update. All right, Campbell, oh, My Avengers of Superman co producer and writer Joseph Campbell provided an update on when season two could potentially be released during an interview with the Superman homepage YouTube channel. Campbell wasn't able to confirm exactly when season two would debut, but she mentioned that it was developed and made around the same time as season one and teased that it will blow people's minds when it arrives. Now, I believe that saying that it's going to blow people's minds because if you saw the end of season one in episode 10, you probably said to yourself, well, damn, it's about to go down. And I cannot wait because they were just scratching the surface. But let's see exactly what she says. Superman homepage. It says we got the finale, the finale airing this week. Do we know when season two is going to premiere Campbell? So it's not announced yet. And there's nothing I can say until it's announced. So I was going to say the season premiere is coming out. Stay tuned for season two. We got the wonderful task of being able to make them around the same time. And I'm very excited for this. There's so much stuff in season two. That I think is going to blow people's minds. So yeah, just stay tuned and keep watching. I will keep watching. I will. When asked about the series episode count, Campbell set into stone that it'll be 10 episodes like season one. Tackling the chances of potential third season, she hired that fans are going to be screaming from the rooftops. Should it be confirmed, urging viewers to keep watching and tell others to do the same? So I think that a little bit, it depends on everybody watching. We're so happy to have two seasons picked up right away. So, you know, honestly, there is a season three. All y'all are going to be first ones to know because you're going to be screaming from the rooftops. So if you like it, keep watching. Tell your friends to watch. Rewatch on Max. Rewatch when it's on TV. The best chance to get any show picked up for another season is to watch it and talk about how much you love it. Right on, right on. Um, talked about they have so many plans. We have so many plans. We got lots. We got seasons upon seasons figured out. This is great. Brendan's got a whole board in his house that's got all ideas, so we kept going. I like this. Off the animated shows and network were order two seasons started off. Um, a given series that I worked on simultaneously, which could be a good sign when my adventures with Superman season two comes out. Guys, this is amazing. I like this. Saying as early as 2024, I doubt it because you know the strike is going on and everything. So I'm not gonna bet on that. But they already uh, are working on it. They they can't give all the details, of course, but you know, they do have some things up their sleeve, and this makes me happy. It really does because I really did enjoy the show. Lady Hotep said, it's extremely adorable. Right on, right on, right on. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, Lord, DC needs to take over Marvel so we can get another T'Challa. LOL. I don't know about that. They can take over the animated stuff. Uh, and I'm teasing there, but at least we're getting a season two, Kev. Thank you for the comment. Oh, now I got to check it out. Love, Wire, and one of my is one of my favorites. Right on. Yeah, so it's, it's good. If you got a subscription or Adult Swim or Max, Go ahead and enjoy yourself. I think you will have a good old fun time. Tyronda Coleman. I have been MIA or am I? Is that I have been me? Let me know. I think you tried to take that back. I have been MIA. Okay, I got you. Um, is the writing strike still happening? Yes, it is. There has not been a decision yet on that. But on a positive note, guys, we do have a season two coming for my adventures of superman and again guys if you're watching this via live on the replay there's a link down to that article in the description box below for you to read at your own leisure but let's kick it let's i said let's kick it let's <laughs> we can kick it but let's stay on dc let's stay on dc we were talking about superman just a second ago the most popular superhero comic book character of all time in my opinion 
Now let's talk about the second most popular or characters in this realm. I think we can say that's the Batman. I think so. I think so. I don't know what background I want to go with. Number one or number two? Number two or number one? You guys let me know. Topic number three, Stan in DC. Coming from, first we were doing comicbook.com. Now we're doing comicbookmovie.com. The Batman Part 2 rumored to introduce Robin Dick Grayson. The boy wonder. Is that what they call him? Let's see what this is talking about right here. This is in the rumor mail. Following the last night's reports that the Batman's two potential production start date and Clayface environment, we have another far juicier rumor about another classic Batman character. I believe this is my time to shine hello. Is claiming that Matt Reeves' highly anticipated sequel will introduce a new take on the original Robin and Dick Grayson. So I'm going to stop right there. Now, the Batman movie by Matt Reeves, it was a good movie. It wasn't my favorite Batman, but it was a good movie. And to my understanding, that was Batman in his earlier years. I've always had a dream since I was a little boy, and most of you may have as well when you were younger, when it comes to superhero comic book stuff. I at least want to see one character's whole story told from beginning to end in a single continuity. The closest thing we have to that is the MCU, but they've been tripping lately. And now we have this Batman extended universe with Matt Reeves. Again, I did not see the movie, but I mean, I didn't love the movie, but if the first film is about his origin or the first two years of his life, of his career as Batman, and then the sequel, you want to introduce Robin? Isn't that a little fast? That's my first thoughts when I see this article, when I hear this story. I could be wrong. I could be jumping the gun, but I just wanted to let you know where I'm at. New take on the original Robin. There uh, has only been one previous big screen incarn uh, incarnation, Chris O'Donnell on Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. That was horrible. But the character has appeared in numerous TV series. If accurate, Robin's involvement would be somewhat surprising since Robert Pattinson's Bruce Wayne wasn't supposed to have been operating as Batman for very long in the film. I, just, I promise I have not read this article. I promise I have not read it yet. Of course, there could be a significant time jump before the events of the sequel. When the new DC slate, DCU slate was announced, James Gunn confirmed that Reeves' Batverse will remain separate from the DCU. I do like this. So this, and, and that's not new news. This is old news. So this movie, along with Todd Phillips' Joker sequel, will be considered Elseworld Tales, okay? Uh, we already knew that, but it's good to reiterate it. A new actor will down the Batman Brave and the Bold Cow, okay? We knew that. Uh, which will also feature a different take of Robin the Crepe Crusader Damian Wayne. Uh, Robert, I mean, yeah, I don't want to see this in Batman too. Uh, Robert Pattinson, I, 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 I don't, if, if they never continued this elsewhere universe with the Matt Reeves Batman, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't lose a moment of sleep. I would rather them, I'm not angry if they move forward because a lot of people liked it and it made money. So, I mean, at the very least, I understand that. But I, if, if it was up to me, if I can, you know, flip my wrist, wrist. Or if, you know, fling my magic wand, I will have them put their energy and resources in something else. Um, this is talking about the cast. Plot details are still under wraps. All Reeves will offer is that the sequel will continue the epic crime saga. This is my time to shine. Hello. I know it's Robin. I know Robin is in it. Dick Grayson. And the word on the street is, you know, they're pretty decent with their uh, scoops. But, you know, this is just a rumor. So. Did you like the first? I want to hear from you guys, whether you're watching via live or in the chat. Did you like the Batman film by Matt Reeves that came out a couple of years ago? And when they come out with part two, are you interested in seeing Robin in this, whether it's Dick Grayson or Damian Wayne? Let me know. I'm curious. I guess little boy he was starring, staring at in the movie is Robin. I don't even remember that. Um. 15 Batman, 100 Superman. Nobody could recast better. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be an introduction and he's going to be very young, like a baby. I'm teasing. 
But I, I, I don't know. I'm just not really feeling it so far. I wonder how old Robin will be. I did like the movie and looking forward to the next one. Right on. Introducing Nightwing, I'm tired of Robin. Somebody got to make some DC that make DC some money. Yeah. Uh, you fell asleep on it. Is that the first Batman? I like the Batman. Just we DC will get it together. They get it together. They get it together. July of 2025. We're going to get Superman Legacy. I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be great. But you guys let me know what you think in that comment section below. I'm dying to know. And again, if you're watching this via live or on the replay, there is a link down to this, that article in the description box below for you to read at your own leisure. But let's stay on DC. This is the last topic for DC. Yes, it is. This is the last topic for DC. And uh, we all know our boy, Mr. Giancarlo Esposito. Man, it's a legend. He's been in The Mandalorian right there. He was just, he was Gus and Breaking Bad. He was in Spike Lee movies. Look at all these credits our man has right here. He was back to Stockman and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I said God, Godfather of Harlem. Better Call Saul, The Boys. What else? What else? Man. Filmography is deep. Westworld. Maze Runner. Rebel. The Get Down. The Jungle Book. Batman. Assault on Arkham. All, some DC stuff. It, it's serious. The man has range. He's He's talented. He can do no wrong. God, we only on 2004. Hold on, let me scroll down here real quick. Real quick. I was trying to get to the to the Spike Lee stuff if, if just somebody didn't know. Where's Do the Right Thing in? Where did that movie come out? What year was it? It's down here. Am I tripping? There we go. Do the Right Thing, 89. Yeah, check out all of his stuff. Every movie. That's your homework assignment. You have a week. Okay, but topic number four, talking about Mr. Uh, Giancarlo Esposito. We stand on DC. We got this from, what is this, GameRadar.com. Giancarlo Esposito says he's spoken to James Gunn about a DC role. What? What could he play? I remember a number of months ago last year, he was talking about the MCU, saying that, you know, people were speculating that he could be Magneto in X-Men. I don't know about that myself. I'm pretty sure he could do a good job, but I personally don't want the weight, the race swapping. But that's me. And I don't want to get into that too much. But look at your boy. Look at your boy. The Mandalorian actor Giancarlo Esposito has revealed he's in talks over at a DC role. While speaking at Comic Con Panama over the weekend, Esposito addressed the continuing speculation that he would appear in a superhero movie with an unexpected omission. I have been talking to James Gunn about the possibility of being in a movie. Who knows, Esposito said. Mm, yes. Mm. A handful has already chimed in fan casts in the replies. Among them are Superman villains Brainiac and Lex Luthor. One has even suggested Justice League member Martian Manhunter. Y'all want to see that? Lady Hotep, you want to see Giancarlo as Martian Manhunter? Which we certainly wouldn't be against. I don't, I don't know about that. I don't. I don't I don't think I want to see him in makeup. You know, they, could, they could knock it out the park, but you know, right now that one is not jumping out of me. The audience member in attendance, the Twitter user, I don't feel like reading that, also claims Esposito is aware of him being fan cast at the likes of Charles Xavier, Magneto, Mr. Freeze. He also favors playing a hero over a villain. Oh, I did not know that. And knows that one day he will be hired for a Marvel and DC project. Then I gotta, you know, he can just stun on him for a little bit. I gotta feel good. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I know that I can do Marvel or DC or both because I'm the shiznit. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, he wouldn't say it like that, but he would say it. He would think it. Or it, it just the fact that it is true is, is nice. <laughs> James Gunn and C co CEO Peter Saffron launched the DC Studios Grand Plans to reboot the cinematic universe in January. Titled DC Chapter One Gods and Monsters, the first stage of the saga features five movies and five TV shows Superman Legacy, Batman the Brave and the Bold, and we went through all that before. 
where Esposito would fit in, then it's an any it's anyone's guess, but maybe we should let the breaking bag actor cook. Let him cook. I wish I had that audio right now. Uh, for more information, check out all this stuff right here. Again, guys, this is in the description box below for you to read at your own leisure. This is coming from um the, the film radar, or I don't know, I'm excuse me, games radar. I'm so sorry. But yeah, Giancarlo Esposito is talking to everybody. So what could he play? What they say, Brainiac, Lex Luthor, Martian Manhunter. Um, uh, what's the? I forgot his name. I was trying to make a joke, but I can't remember the character's name. So I don't think I'm gonna make the joke because it wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> but Jenna James said he needs to be a villain. Okay, the, it, let's talk about that. Does he need to be a hero? Does he need to be a villain? The article said he wants to be a hero. So, yeah. Mr. Freeze would be a good call? Really? I don't know. I mean, he could do um, a number of things, but I don't know. I don't know. Let's see here. The earliest you remember him in school days. Right on, right on. Yeah, his filmography is deep. Mr. Freeze. Okay. Loved him in school days and fresh. Mr. Freeze is a good choice. Yeah. How is he able to promote and be at Comic-Con during the strike? Latino Slant? Latino Slant, that is a good question that I don't know the answer to. And I have been following the strike a bit, but I have not get, gotten to the trenches and covered all the details to know all the rules, all the, the do's and don'ts, all the cans and can'ts. So that's a good question, Latino Slant. I don't know. I do not know. That is a good question. Um, Comic-Con Panama. Yeah. Maybe, maybe because he's not promoting a specific film. Like, hey, I've been cast in this movie. I'm going to play this role. The film comes out at this time. You know, maybe that's why, because he just said, we just had talks. So maybe that's the loophole, but good, good observation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. No Martian Manhunter. Okay. I'm a big fan of Mr. Esposito, a.k.a. Big Brother Almighty, Espa, Esteban. But in an actual role that doesn't come with controversy and division. Yeah, we got to try to stay away from that. Oh, Zeus. Zeus. You have the casting that I would love. Ooh, Raza Ghoul. Oh, my goodness. I like it. <laughs> Hold on. Let me try to get off my cord here. I like it. Raza Ghoul. I can dig that. I can I can do that right there. Yes. You you went you got the best comment of the live stream today. With that one right there. I'm feeling like M. Bison right now. Oh my god. Yes! Yes! Yeah, man. I, I that's better than Martian Manhunter. That's better than Freeze, Dr. Doom, not Dr. Doom, um Brainiac or Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor wouldn't be bad, but I, I like Ross. I like Ross. I, like oh, that's, that's, I, I want that. He that's that's it. That's it. That's that's the casting. James Gunn, make it happen. Are you serious? Great job. I'm I'm like really excited now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Y'all, like, what y'all think about that? And you can you can put your own uh, bid in there as well. Uh, but yeah, I like that. Soto Soto said I can see him as Mr. Freeze. Uh, exquisite coilless Giancarlo is such a talented actor. He is, he deserves a comic book movie franchise. I will give, I will pay the money. I, I will pay the money. Only hero I can see him as is a seasoned icon or Mr. Terrific. I know who icon, I don't know who Mr. Terrific is. Yes, th this is true. The man can literally do anything. This is true. This is true. Oh. Okay, that's a good one. Vandal Savage. Okay. That's a that's another good one. I like it. Y'all, that's two dope ones right there. 
I don't do I like Vanda Savage more than uh Ross Al <laughs> He would uh man man I can see Sinestro Zeus is on fly, fire today. Zeus is on fire today. <laughs> oh man, I, I like that. Yes, y'all, y'all keep it coming. Keep it coming. Uh let's see here. Uh, the easiest choice, I guess, for Juan Carlos Esposito would be Braniac or Lex Luthor, but he played Lex type character in The Boys. Uh, Sinestro, yeah, Sinestro. I like Sinestro. I like uh, Vandal Savage. Yeah, man, I, and I like uh, Raz Ghoul. Those are damn good. No, what's up with Ruto? I don't know. B- B- Batista's Vandal Savage, maybe, but right now I cannot get Drax out of my head. I cannot get Drax out of my head. Um, he is growing. He is getting better, you know. Um, but right now, I got, I got him. I got Drax on my mind. Uh, Calozan, Mister Terrific, was on Arrow for a few seasons. I, I think I remember that. Uh, Brainiac. Okay, y'all. That that's it's right now. The Raza Ghoul, the uh, Randall Savage, and the Sinestro are winning. Sinestro was in last place. I'm dashing back and forth between Vandal and and um, and Raza Ghoul. Those are two dope ass characters that he could kill. Man, hold up, that's that's I, I am impressed. Great job, uh, Zeus. Great job, everybody. That that was fun <laughs> right there. But yeah, guys, let me know again. While watching via live on the replay, uh, who could Giancarlo Esposito play? in dc since he's talking to james gunn and if anybody knows if he's allowed to even do this bit of promoting um you know since there's a a strength uh fill us in as well you know this is a community and we all trying to learn together but guys that's gonna wrap it up with the dc now let's go ahead and move on to the marvel